Hey guys, let's get personal. Today, I wanna to take you behind the scenes and show you what goes on in an average day of mine as a digital illustrator and YouTuber. I've been into art and nature since I was a little kid. And to me, those two things have always been interconnected. Creativity happens when I'm out in the woods, but it also happens when I'm sitting down in front of a piece of paper. And I think that's why so much of my artwork happens in nature. When I was younger, I drew a lot of inspiration from comics. Now my favorite comic strip by far was Calvin and Hobbes. For Calvin, being outside was just a place where his imagination could run wild. Anything could happen. He might come across a crashed alien spaceship or even a dinosaur. That's why I start so many of my days just like this, on a hike, out in nature, in a place where my imagination can run wild. So behind me, you can sort of start to see what I came here to take some photos of. This is Squire's Castle. There's nothing cooler than wandering through the woods and walking straight into a medieval looking castle. 10 year old Brad would have loved this. Heck, 40 year old Brad loves this. Many of you have been following my adventures learning Blender over the last year. And this castle is going to be my inspiration for the project I'm gonna be working on today. I've been snapping pictures from a lot of different angles and really getting a feel for all of those cool little touches. I really wanna capture that atmosphere of being outside and walking through the woods and stumbling upon something cool. And I wanna capture it in my cartoony style. So now that I have all the photos that I need, let's head home and get to work. All right, here it is. The studio. This is the only angle in which my basement looks good. The basement is pretty long. I'm using a 55 millimeter lens on that camera, which gives me a nice bokeh effect that blurs out the background really well. So that means the camera is, is pretty far from me. You can see where the camera is in comparison to where my primary light is. I record my audio and my video separately, so I like to get my microphone pretty close to me, but still out of frame. It's just a USB mic that I then plug into my computer where I can record the audio from there. I've spent money to make this picture that you see right now looking good, but I haven't spent a lot of money on the amenities. For example, I'm I'm sitting on a paint can right now. Not a fancy chair, but it doesn't matter. I'm only upgrading things as I need to upgrade them. The other thing you haven't seen but have seen footage from is my overhead mount. If I'm doing any kind of unboxing or I'm showing a product with my hands while I'm talking to this camera, I have a second camera. It's usually just a phone that's shooting straight down at the product. Now, while while I'm here, I want to talk about this laptop. My computer is an extension of me. When I don't have to think and I can just act, it's like a third arm. The Asus StudioBook Pro is that computer. When you're drawing with a pencil, you're not thinking about the tool. You're just focused entirely on the drawing. And when your computer has no limits, it takes down the boundaries that other machines have. It removes the ceiling on my creativity and I can just go. And that is exactly what this laptop does for me. All right, here we are, this is it. This is my office. So here it is. I record up here sometimes too. This desk is going to look really familiar to a lot of you. This is where I unbox a lot of products. A lot of my drawing videos are filmed here. It's right in front of a big open window. I've got a big overhead light. And of course, I love to slide some colored poster board onto the desk to get some good glamour shots. So yeah, this is, this is the desk you guys see a lot. Now my work desk, on the other hand, that is behind me. I can work standing up or sitting down. I have a big external monitor here I can use. I can just plug that into my laptop and I'm good to go. I've really become enamored with the dial on the Pro Art Studio book. I knew it would be good for drawing and changing brush sizes, zooming in and out, that sort of thing, but it came in handy when I was editing too. I've been using it to zoom in and out of the timeline for those little editing details. Okay, I think we're ready to get started on this art project. I wanna take advantage of the studio book. It's like they made this thing for Blender. The trackpad has three physical buttons. Usually you need a mouse to use Blender really efficiently. That's because the mouse middle click is how you pan around images in 3D. It's one of the most important things you do. And with the studio book, you can do this with the trackpad. It also has a full number pad, which is really handy for switching views. Not to mention the computer itself, the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3060 is really nice for 3D work. So we are going to be making a model of the castle that we took photos of earlier today. I chose this for two reasons. One, I like taking inspiration 
from local objects, local landmarks. When it's a place you can physically go to and see and walk around and understand how it's laid out, you have so much better of an idea of how to model it. The second reason is I wanted something self-contained, something small that I could do in an afternoon and just practice my blender skills on. So earlier today, I popped in the SD card from my camera and I pulled those photos onto my computer and now they are in Lightroom. This is gonna help me remember a lot of those little details that I saw when I was walking around it this morning. Even though I'm only gonna be drawing this from one angle, I wanted to get shots from multiple perspectives because when you're building in 3D, sometimes it just helps to really understand how something is constructed. These other photos are really more about the details. Roof details, stair details, the windows details. So right now I have a pretty good idea of what I'm gonna do. So let's move over to Blender and start blocking things out. All right, so this is starting to look really good. As you can see, I've got my basic shapes in place. Uh, in a few places, I've started to even add a little bit of that detail. For example, I've added these little blocks along the top that gives it that castle look. I've also started to pop in some of the like roof details that we saw earlier along the front. Since I still am learning Blender as I go, I'm trying some different modifiers that I maybe haven't used too much before. These are cubes and I've added an array modifier to them. The modifier gets the spacing perfect for me so I don't have to think about it. So I'm going to keep pounding away on this. I'll be back in like a half hour or an hour. It'll only be a few seconds for you. We're going to get to the next step. Okay, good news, progress, it's being made. I've been going through here and cutting out all these window shapes and I've been getting a lot of those little pieces parts. To do that, I've been using another modifier. I've been using a Boolean modifier to do that. And you may be asking yourself, what's a Boolean? Basically what it's allowing me to do is cut one shape from another shape. So what I've done is I've created a lot of blocks and I duplicate those blocks and those blocks represent my window. I position them to where they need to be along my main tower and then I use the Boolean to cut that out. The other architectural element that I've been playing around with more that took a little bit of studying up on is getting these blocks to not only array, but also wrap around in a circle for the round parts. That was kind of fun. Had to watch a tutorial or two on that, but it, I think it turned out pretty well. Also right now, it is time to jump in here and see what this looks like when I turn the rendering on. Are you ready? Boom, there we go. Look at it, it's looking tight. Even with just one big light on it, once you change this render mode, I think it looks really good. This is also where the studio book really shines. That RTX 3060 is doing a lot of work right now, but I love the speed. I moved over to using the Cycles engine because that engine just looks so much better when you're rendering things out. Even though it takes a lot longer, if you have a computer that can handle it, it's my preferred way of working. It's not just the RTX in here. The StudioBooks also has an AMD Ryzen processor. It is a 5900HX processor, and this particular one has 32 gigabytes of RAM. You can get that configured up to 64. Okay. So overall, I'm really happy with how this is coming along. I'm gonna finish the structure up. We're gonna add some other things and I'll be back in a minute. All right, you ready for this? I'm going to turn on my viewport shading. Uh, studio book, do your magic. As you can see, I have added a lot of color here. Uh, one, I added a background, a sky color. Obviously, I have the green of the trees and the brown of the dirt and that sort of thing going on. And I really like these bright colors. And the reason these bright colors work really well for this model is because those blocks are gray. It's a very light gray. When you have a really muted color like that gray, you can surround it with a lot of bright colors and make it really pop out. I think if the castle itself or the object that you're drawing is really bright, you probably wanna stay away from putting a lot of bright colors around it. So now that this is looking good, uh, let's add in some background elements. So I'm starting in on these backgrounds now. Uh, what I have here are some basic trees. Uh, once I get this tree in here and it's looking good, I am gonna duplicate the living daylights out of it. So let's start duplicating trees. I have added a lot more trees here. One thing that I'm starting to pay attention to at, at this point is my camera view. I don't wanna just add trees everywhere. I'm only gonna be taking like a still image uh, of this design. Once I started getting trees in here, uh, I felt it was too too tree-y, so I did leave some green grass behind it just to give it some variety behind the castle, even though in real life, uh, behind the castle, it's all trees. I also added a tree in the foreground, which didn't exist. That's just a pine tree that I duplicated and pulled out front. And overall, 
rendered, this is looking good. I am very happy with how this is turning out. The other thing with Blender is it's giving you, you know, kind of a real time, realistic image. And so oftentimes when I'm working with just a still image, it's not uncommon for me to just take that image and move it over to Photoshop to do my final touch ups. And so here it is in Photoshop. I've adjusted the contract. It really pops. I wish you could see this screen on the studio book, this green. Oh, it is so vibrant on this Pantone validated 4k display. It, it shines and I'm really happy with how this has turned out. So I, I'm going to declare this done. It is the end of the day and I like to just unwind and relax by checking social media, maybe answering some comments on YouTube, just generally reviewing the day and seeing what I've been able to accomplish. I am a big believer in a balance between work and life. I haven't always been when I was building up the YouTube channel. I definitely worked way too hard. You know, now that I've established it a little bit, I like to separate those things. So now that it's the evening, I'm gonna make some dinner, hang out with the family, and just relax. If you have any comments or questions, let me know down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the project and how I spend my day. Thank you all for watching, and I'll talk to you in a couple of days.